Massacre in Korea, 1951, by Pablo Picasso. Recognize this character? He appeared in the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz and was known as the Tin Man. His main feature is that he doesn't have a heart, though he would greatly like to have one. I'm not sure if Picasso saw the film, but there's a good chance that he did. Being a voracious collector of visual ideas, the Tin Man may have been an influence on his pictorial style. Why do I mention him? Well, I'll tell you later. This video is really about Picasso's 1951 painting, Massacre in Korea. Picasso had a complex, fascinating character. He was the embodiment of tortured 20th century consciousness. His personality could be comic, playful, innovative, perceptive, restless, irreverent, forceful, savage, ruthless, iconoclastic, vicious, alienated, dark and brilliant. In this painting, he scrutinizes the insanity and brutality of war and human nature. The work is a condemnation of war. In it, he expresses the conviction of his pacifist leanings and his commitment to universal peace. Pablo Picasso was dismayed over the horrors he saw in the Second World War. He painted his famous Guernica in 1937. It was an emotional condemnation of the bombing of civilians in the small Basque town of the same name in northern Spain by the Nazi fascists. And it captures all the horror of such an outrageous crime. Massacre in Korea was produced in January 1951, six months after the start of the Korean War, and was inspired by one of the many massacres that followed the American invasion of Korea in 1950, the Sinshon, or possibly the No Geun Ri massacre. It is a criticism of the American intervention in the Korean War, but it is only the title that tells us of the setting and what exactly the painting portrays. At the end of the Second World War, Korea was divided along the 38th parallel into two zones, occupied by two countries who had prevailed in World War II, the United States and the USSR. On the 25th of June 1950, North Korea, communist and supported by the USSR, launched an offensive against the South with the intention of uniting the country. South Korea benefited from the military support provided by the United States, which responded to the call of the United Nations Security Council. This attack marked the beginning of the two-year Korean War, which broke out at the beginning of the Cold War, a Cold War that lasted from 1947 to 1991, when the world was divided into two blocks, Soviet and Western. Many attempts at negotiation intended to prevent the widening of the conflict were carried out from July 1951, before finally leading on the 27th of July 1953 to recognition of the country's split into two blocks. Two million perished in this internationalized civil war. 70% of these were civilians. A detail in a painting can be troubling when you aren't sure what it's meant to be. Is it pure abstraction? Something that has no connection to reality? Is it something angelic? Those two upward brush strokes could be the wings of an angel. And maybe that's a figure kneeling in front of the angel. But what kind of an angel is it? A merciful, benign angel? Or the angel of death. Is it something demonic? Those same bold strokes could also evoke horns like those of the devil. Nevertheless, as with many conundrums, the context is essential in helping to resolve our doubts. 
The context of the Korean War, given by Picasso's title, tells us that the central piece of brushwork most probably depicts a raging fire, an inferno. The paintwork suggests confused panic and screaming. It is known that many civilians were killed by forcing them into warehouses and then setting them on fire. Also in the background, there is a war ruin on top of a hill and on the left of the picture, in the far distance, there seems to be something resembling a tank. There is a river or a border that links the background with the foreground. It is like the 38th parallel that comes between the two Koreas. It also separates the civilians from the soldiers, the victims from the executioners. In this foreground, the two groups stand out in the painting. On the left, women and children in a loose triangular formation. They are targeted by soldiers on the right. The civilians are naked women and children drawn with soft, vulnerable, round shapes and curved lines in total contrast to the men who have hidden faces, straight and brittle lines. They are helmeted in a posture of taking aim. The men are grouped in a sharp square, indicating dominance, solidity, viciousness and power. They are not identified as American soldiers, but they look aggressive and ruthless. They also look strangely like medieval robotic cyborgs. At least one of them bears some similarity to the tin man of the film The Wizard of Oz, who famously had no heart. Apart from their strange helmets, they are naked, with big feet and no penises. Their emasculation probably further emphasizes their unfeeling nature, their lack of humanity. Their weapons, too, are not painted realistically, but still look very menacing. Indeed, they appear ultra-deadly. We can distinguish a gradation in the fear among the civilians on the left, where the characters furthest from the spectator seem not to have grasped the imminence of the disaster. She looks like a teenager. Perhaps she's taken aback. A child runs to hide near her. Another very small child is playing with some flowers at her feet and is totally oblivious to what is going on. The mothers have their faces distorted by terror and anguish. There is too much agony to express. The pregnant woman on the left looks up to heaven as if hopeful that God will come to their rescue. A child buries its face in her side. It is trying to protect itself. The face of the woman next to her is distorted by grief. She desperately squeezes the baby in her arms for the last time. There is an open grave behind the group. The group of men represents a war machine and military force. This is underlined by the disproportion of the weapons they are aiming. The figure on the right, unmasked, brandishing a sword, could be the leader and is giving the signal for execution. He might symbolize political decision-making. Picasso has represented war not just as a juxtaposition of male brutality against defenseless women and children about to be killed. He is also showing it as genocide because it is against the life and reproduction of the human species. Not many modern artists have been as explicit and expressive in depicting their condemnation of war as Picasso has in his painting Massacre in Korea.